So the Giants take Matt Peart, offensive tackle out of UConn, at pick 99. Now then, this is this is kind of a confusing pick. Uh, I won't lie to y'all, but it's not a bad pick because Matt Peart is actually somebody that I mocked to the Giants at pick 99 in my last mock draft. I the the, the difference was that in that mock draft. I had us taking Matt Peart because we did not go offensive tackle in the first or second round. Um, in that mock draft, I went Simmons in the first round and a center in the second round. So either way, I thought Peart was good enough to for the for the Giants to draft and bring on board to become a starting offensive tackle. Now, obviously, in this situation, so far we have Andrew Thomas, Xavier McKinney, and Matt Peart. Now, before I get into the thought process that just are rolling around in my head, I will say. Um, this is something that Giants fans have been asking for for years, including myself, which is address the offensive line, you know, dedicate a draft to the offensive line or dedicate an entire free agency to the offensive line. Just try and fix the offensive line. And now we have two tackles in this draft dedicated, you know, obviously to the offensive line. This is something that's been needed to be done for years. So in that sense, I'm I'm glad that we took Matt Peart because we're actually trying to fix this thing up on and, you know, try to get it to be a good offensive line rather than spending too much money in free agency like we did with Solder for um, you know good players, average players, which is not what we want, good the amount of money that we spent on Solder actually. And then they don't work out and you know we're stuck in we're stuck with a quarterback that gets sacked like 50 times a year and a running back that gets tackled in the backfield before he makes it like one yard past the line of scrimmage. So in that sense I'm happy that they're addressing the offensive line. Now what this does tell me is that we're probably not going to pick a center because what I was looking at at pick 99 here was either a center or somebody like a Bradley and Nye an edge. I'm still looking for an edge. I was thinking about inside linebacker also and now for 110 tomorrow, I think they might go uh, at either edge or inside linebacker. I'm thinking Bradley and Nye or Troy Die or maybe similar players of that. Oh my god. the. The Los Angeles Rams logo just popped up and I got reminded how ugly that thing is. God, why did they change their logo? But um, getting back to the topic here, what this tells me is that we're probably not gonna take a center. If we do, I will truly be surprised because the centers did drop all the way down here to 99. I mean, they still could take one at 110, but I, I don't know, I have a feeling that they're gonna go back to defense again because they do need to focus on that defense a little bit or this actually opens up a multitude of things, but the main thing is Nate Solder might be cut. Now, for some people, they're saying he's definitely cut. I mean, I think we have five tackles on the roster now. I'm going to list them off. Nate Solder, Cam Fleming, Nick Gates, and then the two we took in this draft, Andrew Thomas and Matt Peart. Maybe they trot out Nick Gates and try him out of center, and then that way we have four tackles on the roster, and that kind of makes a bit more sense. But what I think is going to happen is that they're gonna trot out Andrew Thomas at left tackle because it, would, it wouldn't it would exactly be effective to force the guys to switch back to right tackle for one year and then switch him back to left tackle next year after Solder's off the books. So instead of causing, you know, what it would be an inefficient and confusing move, I think they're gonna have Andrew Thomas go out as our left tackle this coming year. And before we took Parrot, I thought Solder was gonna go out as our right tackle and maybe he still does, and you have Parrot sit behind him and learn. And I'll I'll actually put in the clip of what I said about Parrot inside um, my last mock drive video because it covers a good amount of information. It covers, um, you know, what I think he's gonna do, his role on the Giants, and pros and cons about him. Uh, one thing I did mention is that he's a really good offensive tackle. He's a tackle with a um, good amount of a ceiling, a really nice high ceiling. He's very big, but he could get bigger. Like his entire mass is built out of muscle. He's like, um, let me pull up his metrics real quick. He's 6'7", 318, so that's actually very similar to Nate's older size. And one of the cons on him is that he needs to build a bit more uh, mass and he could really just add on more and it'll be more muscle. Like there's almost, the, the guy doesn't look fat. Let me just leave it at that. And offensive tackles, you already know, they're big guys. But his weight is completely based off of, uh, based off of muscle and he has experience at offensive guard right tackle and left tackle now i think he's gonna sit behind either solder or camp fleming 
for either half a year or a full year and then he's gonna come in as our starting right tackle the following year whatever the case is we have the two tackles of the future in my opinion because you don't take him in the third round and then expect him to be a backup especially not when we have needs that center edge and inside linebacker where you could have addressed either one of those at 99 so i think the giants and joe judge and gentlemen took this guy you know fully intending to have him start a tackle at some point during the year now if we cut solder because of the new cba rule it will not be that much of a cap hit as you know it was last year the cap will be spread across two years which is a lot more manageable we could trade solder whatever the case is pert will be the starting tackle um i think at the very least by halfway through the season and like i said i'm going to clip in what i said in the mock draft video he's a really good tackle there's a reason i wanted him if we didn't take one in the first round he has a lot of potential and he has a lot of experience something that i like he has good technique I look at him as kind of like a Makai Becton type player, except he has better footwork than Makai Becton, which is why I didn't like Becton at all. And Matt Pert is a really big dude and he does use that to his advantage, but he has good foot technique also. He needs to work on his hand technique and there is room for improvement everywhere. There's a reason he's going in the third round, but he's a good offensive tackle. I am confused by the pick, but it's not a bad pick because this is right around where I thought he would go. I, I just part of me is happy that we're addressing the offensive line so much Daniel Jones is probably somewhere doing backflips right now He's not gonna get sacked that much anymore Saquon is probably doing backflips also He's not gonna get tackled in the backfield anymore the offensive line Within the next two years, you know giving Pert and Thomas time to develop is gonna be fixed and we addressed it I, I just hope that we could still be able to address the parts of the defense that I want you know to be fixed such as edge rush next uh well i guess tomorrow we'll see how it turns out um but let me know what you guys think i'm gonna put the clip in right here from my mock draft vid once again and put your comments down below that paired offensive tackle out of yukon 6'7, 318 pounds long and well built with more space uh for mass like this guy's completely built out of muscle too when you look at his profile good balance uh but hand technique needs improvement he has experience at uh offensive guard right tackle and left tackle and any type of mistakes or any type of cons that are on this guy are very fixable now i so said we have somebody like a cameron Fleming that you, you might as well trot out instead of taking a tackle in the second round i do believe we should still take a tackle in the third round if we you know we go the route so far because Fleming is not a permanent answer and uh this is a guy you could try and develop into that permanent answer i'm not saying he's going to be a great tackle at the NFL level but I definitely believe he has the potential to be a good to above average tackle at the NFL level which is honestly what you really need on a on any team really you don't need a great offensive line to do things you need a really good offensive line to do things and a really good offensive line doesn't have you know great players at every position sometimes it's just a sum of the parts and I believe if he comes in and develops to his full potential we'll have a good sum of the parts and we'll have a good a, maybe even really good offensive line top 10 maybe we'll definitely have a top 15 but his guys his mistakes are really fixable you know what i'm saying or, or his cons i should say what the really only the bad things i see about him is he probably needs to add more mass which is kind of weird seeing as he's 318 pounds but like i said it's all muscle and since he's like six seven six eight he's a really lean figure for an offensive lineman most of his muscle is in his upper body also which regularly you know and on almost any other football player would be great but you know positions like offensive line and running back you know that require blocking it's usually better to have your the, more of your muscle mass in the lower body so that's something he needs to improve on which i'm sure he can do you know with our strength and conditioning coach just you know get in the gym and uh or maybe even change up his diet so he gains a little weight on the lower body uh things then uh, another thing that needs improvement is even though he has good hand technique um it's inconsistent at times you know sometimes you'll see it and be like wow it's all it's like at that top level other times he slips up does really bad moves i think that's partly because he started off at guard and he transitioned to tackle so maybe he's doing you know the hand movements for a guard and whatnot and you could get you could get caught off guard with that pun intended in the nfl and you could get a holding call or something but flaws that are easily fixable and that's the reason he's going around this range. If it were not for those flaws, you know, if they were a little bit better, he'd be going in the first or second round, but they exist. And I believe with our coaching staff, the competent coaching staff that we have, that they could fix it. And this guy is, you know, he's also really big. I like 6'7", 318, and when he does gain weight eventually, he's gonna be, I'm not gonna say Makai Becting big, but he's gonna get up there. And he, he has a better 
technique than Mikhail Becton in my opinion you know just better foot technique so he could improve and he could be one of those guys but you know it's, it's all potential it's all potential I would love to bring him onto the team and see what he can do alright guys thanks for watching put your comments down below make sure you smash that like button subscribe and turn on post notifications until next time I'm out Yer.